And that's really the key. If you go through your PL and just take your, your drawdowns over any period of time and cut them in half, your overall net gain will be significantly higher. It's not about how big of the win each one is. It's about how small of a drawdown you can make each loss. This is the How to Trade Stocks and Options podcast brought to you by 10MinuteStockTrader.com where we cover finance, stocks, options, entrepreneurship, education, and money. And here's your host, voted one of the top 100 people in finance, Christopher Ewell. Are you looking to take the guesswork out of trading? Well, you need to get the Secret Investing Book. It's the underground playbook that 10 minute stock traders are using to take the guesswork out of trading every single day. You can get your free copy over at secretinvestingbook.com. That's secretinvestingbook.com. Be sure to like, subscribe, and watch all of our past episodes over at sharevision.com. Good afternoon, traders. I hope you all had a fantastic long weekend. Just to recap real quick, Friday, uh, the family was all home, and I was like, well, I'm going to take the day off. Took the day off, no big deal. Had a good old time. We went to the State Fair of Texas. Uh, we hadn't been since 2018. My my youngest one, so how many years ago? That was four years ago, so he was three at the time. He, they had no memory of what the State Fair is or was and everything, so uh, that was a really good time. Um, had a nice, chill weekend, did some birthday parties and you know all that kind of family stuff. Uh, and then yesterday, thanks to Dr. Sinclair, I spent five hours back testing. So Dr. Sinclair, I really appreciate his enthusiasm. But right now, I'm talking to you, my friend. Right now he's in that phase where he's getting overwhelmed with so many different options and opportunities that he's excited and he's exploring all of it. And so he was like, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And I'm like, eh, let's go find out. So uh, he mentioned hull moving averages, which I had never heard of before. And then while I was going down the moving average rabbit hole, he was talking, well, he didn't mention it, but I also looked at double and triple exponential moving averages, which I had never even knew existed. Long story short, uh, spent five hours back testing these on yesterday, on Monday, and uh, to no, no avail. And when I say no avail, I mean no combination of crossovers, breakouts, anything like that. And I, I, I have a very rigorous testing criteria. No combination could beat what we already do from a back testing perspective. So I want you to know that I appreciate very much the excitement that you have about it. That's cool. And the fact that I got to learn from it and the fact that we back tested our strategy. And even with these exotic, if you want to think of it, exotic moving averages, it couldn't be touched. So that was kind of cool, being able to, to do that. So I appreciate you, Dr. Sinclair. Dr. Sinclair also had a couple uh, questions, and so I wanted to uh, wanted to answer those real quick. One of the questions he had, I think we could figure this out on TrendSpider real quick. He's wanting to look at not just uh, like a candlestick chart, but also the Heiken and Ashy candles. So the Heiken and Ashy candles are pretty interesting. If you are new to trading, this is really helpful to you because what they do is they color all the candles in the color of the trend. So in this case, if it's a bullish trend, they're colored green. If it's a bearish trend, they're colored red. The high and the low actually do match the high and the low for that period, but the open and close price are calculated. Uh, don't ask me for the formula because I don't know it. But they're calculated based on previous candles as well as the current data. So his question was, could we see this alongside regular candles? And I was like, absolutely, check this out. So if you go up into this spot right here, and I like the horizontal, I know some people like vertical, but I like horizontal. You can actually change the top one to be candles and the bottom one to be Heiken Ashi or whatever combination you want. If you want to do the raindrop candles, which are pretty cool, Boom, you got it. His other question is, is there a way to sync the cursor across them? And uh, from what I can tell, there's not. There could be a setting for that, um, but I, I, don't, I don't know where it is. The, the one thing I would recommend if you're trying to do both is to stack them vertically like this and then align your most recent one at the same point 
That way, when you're moving down the line, you can move down. But check this out. If you drop in a drawing, right? Let's say I drop in a vertical line, it'll go to both of them. And maybe that's what you're looking for. If you drop in a horizontal line, it'll go to both of them. Maybe that helps. Hope it does. I appreciate your, your friendship and uh, I appreciate your curiosity as well, Dr. Sinclair. Okay. So, back testing hull, double and triple exponentials. Yeah. And the chart type. I, I wrote down on a, just a, just a little behind the scenes. I have a very fancy sticky note that I, I make sure I write down the topics for the day on. So yeah, absolutely. So let's see who's here. Michael, Dr. Sinclair, Donna, good to see you. Victor, hey man. Ernie, what is up, my dude? Jaskaran, hey, it has been a while. Michael Sinclair, Brian, awesome. Glad to see everybody here today. Yeah, we took a nice little break. Uh, speak of a nice little break, I was watching the uh, intraday on the spy, and it was uh, kind of choppy back and forth. Nothing really much happened, and then all of a sudden, bam. <laughs> So apparently the news that is driving this move right now is uh, that like the bonds in Great Britain are, they have three days basically to do whatever they need to do. And, and don't ask me what that is because I don't know. But the bonds in Britain have three days to fix themselves. Otherwise, they, uh, they're they all going to implode and it's the end of the world anyway. So I don't know. We'll just do our best around here. <laughs> Mr. Isaac Herndon, he made it. How you doing, my friend? All right, so I think today could be a busy day. Uh, today is going to be an offensive day, so I'm going to quit with the jibber-jabbering. We don't have any day trades, so we're going to get right into our market analysis and start looking at some swing trades. Okay, welcome to the 10-minute trading room. This is how to trade in 10 minutes a day and exactly how to take the guesswork out of trading. Now, with our 10 minutes to freedom strategy, as you know and as I was just talking about how I back-tested it, it always starts with the market. Now, with the market, we want to see the 10 under the 20 with price under the 50. And let me go to the daily chart here. Now, the blue line is the 10, the black line is the 20, and price, uh, or the 50 is the red line. And let me draw on my line real quick. Oh, I didn't get to make a prediction. Chris's Friday predictions. I was wrong last week. I thought the breakdown was going to happen last week. Uh, Chris's, Chris's prediction at this point is... Um, I'll draw it on the screen. I think slightly down. I, I, I don't think... Okay, I'm, I'm going to say two, two predictions. Either. Because I'm not confident. I'm hoping for this being the double bottom. Bottom one, bottom two, and then we go back up. Truth be told, that's what I would like to see. But, <laughs> as we're all well aware, there's a lot of macro factors that aren't looking too hot right now. So I'm thinking, just following the trend, I think maybe this week uh, we could see 345. 345 is my, I'm going to mark it on the chart here. 345 is my my prediction for the week around this time frame. What day is that? The 20th? That's too far. The 14th is what I need. All right. I think we could see 345 this week. I don't know. <laughs> We're going to trade the trend either way. So we know the trend is down. We know that the percent of stocks above their own 50-day moving averages is at 18%. 18% right now, which means 82%, right? Yeah. 82% of the market is bearish. 18% is bullish. Fin Club came through with a big old red light today. So that makes today an offensive day. Now, if you remember last Thursday, we got to all cash. And I wanted to get out of DWAC last Thursday uh, because it did not have the liquidity requirements that I would have traded. And that was an error in my model. I have corrected it. I did drop the new relative strength scanner into the uh, Discord. So you should have that at your fingertips anytime you want to go grab it. Uh, right there. And also, our theory on DWAC was correct. It is moving down. It is looking strong. So if you held the trade, it's still looking really sharp. Um, but I did not hold the trade because it did not meet my liquidity requirements. So the only thing you can ever do if you find yourself in a trading error is to get out of the trade, review why that happened, and then make sure it didn't happen again. Maria, glad you're here. All right. So we got, 
a bearish trend on an offensive day. So let's go to the next step, which is running the scanner. So we're going to go AI chart bearish power scanner. Now that's using the top stock list. The top stop list I pull from a bar chart each day. And it has the most liquid stocks available. DWAC pulled through on that day because it had crossed over a million on Wednesday. And we got out on Friday. That's, that's exactly what happened. But it ain't going to happen again. I'll put it that way. Let's uh, see how long this is going to take. Surely this won't be too long. Now, keep in mind, we're going to have, I would expect, a decently sized list here. When the list finishes, we're going to go into relative strength. Now, there could be several on the relative strength that line up. We're not going to panic. We're not going to freak out. We're not going to be overwhelmed. We're going to start with the lowest relative strength and then work our way up. We're going to go top to bottom because there are days like today where we could have a lot to choose from. And rather than arbitrarily picking as we go down the list, we're going to use the data. We're going to quantify, which is the worst stock out there, and then start there. We max out our plan at uh, 100 charts. So I'm going to export this. I'm going to drop it into my transpose file. So now it's vertical. and I'm going to drop it back into the relative strength scanner. We're going to have to do this in three tranches. Edit, pay special values. Because this only goes to 36 records, I think. Yeah. Uh, I tried to do all 100 uh, to match what came out of uh, Trend Spider here. But uh, there is a limit, if you would, uh, if you could believe it. There is a limit with um, Google Sheets. And I found it. <laughs> it's 36. Because I'm pulling buttloads of data. I don't know if you guys have ever looked at the uh, dashboard data pool that I pulled back here. There's probably, there's 174,180 cells that contain data and formulas. So your boy Chris is quite the, the nerd there. All right, copy this group here, paste it into our master Benzinga list. That's what I call it. Speaking of, Mitch and I have a meeting next Monday to talk about our next shows that we're gonna do with them. So that'll be fun. All right, so that was the first group. Let's do the second group. Edit, pay special values. Catch up on the chat. Sebastian, how you doing, my friend? Glad you made it. Glad you made it with uh, the market being crazy like it is right now. I'll tell you what. Oh, we got NVIDIA, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft. Ooh, we got some names coming through. Let's see if they pull on the uh, relative strength scanner. Microsoft did. Hell yeah. I love seeing a big old name. Hey, you're an Excel nerd too? Sweet. <laughs> I think Brian really let me have it the one day where he's like, have you ever uh, thought about competing in the Excel championships? And I was like, actually, yes. <laughs> actually, yes. All right, so that's the next group. And then our last tranche to get out all 100. Did Berkshire Hathaway? Did I just see that? Hang on. Edit. Pay special values. BRKB. That's Berkshire Hathaway. What was the bottom one? Okta was the bottom one. How much is BRKB right now? Oh, 266. I was thinking of the big Berkshire Hathaway. That's like in the thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. I'm like, I'm not trading that. <laughs> okay. AKAM. Here's a story about AKAM. If you guys have been around me for a while, you may have heard my story as to why I don't trade earnings. And it was exactly AKAM, Akamai stock. That one, I put on an iron condor before earnings, which is the traditional way to trade earnings with an iron condor. Um, and the liquidity I thought was fine, going back to our thing with DWAC, right? I thought the liquidity was fine, but when I went to exit the trade, I could not get anybody to take the other side of the trade. It should have been a great winning trade. Nobody wanted the opposite side of my trade when I wanted to get out. And so I took a really strong winner into an ugly strong loser 
just because I could not get Phil to get out of Akamai on earnings. So, yeah, that's some bull crap, but I learned from it. So, we have our list here. It's quite big. What we're going to do is I'm going to go to my strategy test, and I'm going to go to my presets, 10-day bearish full. If you need this criteria, it's in the trading room. Just go to the backtesting criteria, and you can download it and a step-by-step -step video on how to do it. And what we're going to do is real quick, we're going to go through each one. And if it has a negative value right here, that means it has a negative expectancy with our stock. We're trying to match uh, our stock and our strategy together to have a positive expectancy. If it does have a positive expectancy, I'll mark it blue. If it does not, I'll mark it red and we're not coming back to it. So let's go down the list. Brian says, I am not going to bet against the Oracle of Arma. He didn't pass on relative strength. All right, so this is going to be red, DT. This is one of my very favorite features about Trend Spider. Uh, I didn't just come across Trend Spider. Um, Steve Burns, when I was working under him, he just absolutely beat me to death with, you have to backtest your system. And he's like, Trend Spider is amazing because you can backtest anything on any stock at any time, and it takes seconds, like we're doing right here. All right, I can actually speak to it and go through all these different ones, PayPal. Whew. So I use PayPal to pay Roots in April. And when they were like, hey, if you spread misinformation, we're gonna take $2,500 from you. And I'm like, and being a public figure, right? People like see my quotes and whatnot. Uh, and I really try to avoid politics. In fact, I was on the news one day and they were asking me political questions. And uh, I was like, I don't do politics. I just stick to stocks. Let, let's let's go back to that. Uh, but yeah, when they were like, hey, we're going to charge you $2,500 every time you say something, some sort of misinformation. I'm like, who is setting the misinformation standard here? As we all know, with the, uh, I'm watching this other YouTube channel. He calls it the COOF. When the, the COOF-19 happened, um, there were all these conspiracy theories, which ended up being true later on. And I'm not about to be under anybody's uh, foot there for $2,500 every time I say my opinion. So I was not into that. I also went on TV and uh, <laughs> I hadn't taken the vaccine. And I was like, who's the crazy one now? <laughs> I felt really dumb saying that later on. Who was that? Speaking of Koof, I marked it the wrong color. I think you guys probably know my politics. The The way that I lean is less government, less taxes, more freedom. That's all I care about. Don't label me. That's what I want. All right, last one comes through here. So we only have four. So here's the funnel, right? It looks this way for a reason. We had 500 in the market. Of the 500, we got 100 that passed on the charts. And then on the relative strength, we only had... There was... No, no, no. There was... there was uh, I don't even know how many. That's probably 30 or so that passed. We just backtested all those. And only four pulled through on the backtest. Now we're going to check and make sure both the 5 and the 10-day are profitable. So 3.72 on the 10-day. Negative. See, that's why we do both. Sorry, that's small. That's why we do both. ZS, negative. Coop, positive. Okay, so Coop is looking good. Net is also positive. So we're down to two. Coop and Net. Yeah, Ernie, Ernie and Sebastian, eh? yeah. I think people who think the same way get drawn together. I think so. All right, let's go back to Coop. Five day versus the 10 day. 10 day is positive three, five day is positive 15. So we'll run the five day, five day trailing PEP, plan to exit point. Now, if it breaks through the Keltner channel, which is what we have on our exit criterias, if it breaks through the Keltner channel, we'll sell into strength, but we're establishing our trailing exits right now. Okay, but we also need to double check and make sure that Coop, which is this one here, passes on its back test through 4415. 
which it does. So that's not a problem. 4415 would be our third entry point. All right, and I'm gonna mark where it's at at the moment as well. 52 on the nose right now. All right, and then net. On the five day, it's positive eight. On the 10 day, it's positive one. So we like five day here. So we're gonna do that again. So five day trailing planned exit point. Very cool. Mark this right here where we're at today. And then net is this one here. It needs to go under 4084 on the back test. Third entry point. Okay. So when it doesn't show up on here, that's no big deal. Oh, it does. Okay. We would just mark this out on the chart, but it's good here. As you can see, I don't know what 3363 was. As you can see, the back test does show that it has the legs to go through here. Not that it's guaranteed or given, but that's the uh, that's what the historical results have shown. So we're good on those two. Next, let's take this a step further and see if we can golden spread these bad boys. So I'm gonna mark this, select all, and I'm gonna make it just coop and just net. And while we do that, let's go look at coop. If we were to look at this option, okay, that one's not looking so hot for liquidity. <laughs> uh, that's in the zeros. What about 21 days out, give or take? on puts, let's see, not there, not there. That one could work, but I like to keep it under $10. So that one's not gonna work. This one could though, but that's only 10 days out. I don't love 10 days out, but we could work with it. We could work with it. I wanna see 21 days out. Let's look at extrinsic. We need to see that under 20%. 144 divided by 4.6 should be, oh, it's 31. I thought it was lower. Coop is not looking as liquid as I hoped. Could potentially do this one. Well, 37 cents, that's not gonna be an issue. All right, we're gonna come back to Coop. If we can't make anything happen on net, we could look at Coop again. Coop's is not, liquidity is not making me feel very warm and fuzzy. Okay, looks like net, we could definitely pull out the, the uh, golden spread. Let's look around here for the long puts. There's just no liquidity on the long puts go all the way out to November 18th. But then the uh, extrinsic, like that's 100% extrinsic value. And if I go one higher, that's about 50% extrinsic value. And then under 10, uh, and then there's no more under 10. All right, same thing. We could make this happen on... Uh, Really, almost any of these. Extrinsic. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're not gonna do golden spreads. We're going to do just long puts for both coop and net. We're in net right now. Which one has a lower relative strength? Coop has lower relative strength. Let's go back to coop. All right, 10 days, October 21st, is the only cycle that has liquidity. This one here was 31%. This one here was extrinsic, 35 cents. That could be okay. All 
Let me look around any other options chains, see if we can make it happen. We need liquidity. As I mentioned in my story earlier, getting into a trade with low liquidity is a lot easier than getting out of a trade with low liquidity. That's the only strike that has liquidity. This one's way better than this one. If we look at extrinsic, 143 over 4.7, still 30%. Yeah, it looks like this is going to be the only one. The 60 strike. Okay. Let's review our liquidity real quick. What we're looking for. Million plus shares traded daily. Now that's been updated, so we don't have to stress. 21 days to expiration. I can't find. 250 open interest. Less than 50 cent bid ask spread. And less than 20% extrinsic. At 21 days, we can't find it. At 10 days, we can. I don't love that. But we can. So let's do this. And then there's there's not any liquidity whatsoever to make the uh, broken wing butterfly, like at all, that's weird. Okay, let's see if we can get filled. Coop. October 21st. S yeah, 60 puts. It's 30 cents wide, that's fine. Let's go back to Coop real quick. Forty-four. Yeah, we're fine. I mean I I'm looking here's here's the Oh, that's the wrong button. <laughs> that's me. Here's the God's honest truth. I'm trying to find a reason not to take this trade and I can't find it. So when that happens, you are obligated to take the trade. I'm trying to find a reason not to, but I, I, I can't because I keep finding reasons to take the trade. So I'm going to try and get filled. Coop, October 21st, 60 puts. Immediately filled at 8.55. Locking it in. Coop, October 21st, 60 puts for 8.55. I'm going to type it in the Discord while we're working here. Trade number one. Coop, 60 puts, expires 10, 21, 4, 8.55, right? 10, 21, 60 puts, 8.55, when Coop's trading at 52.08. When trading at 52.08. Bam. Okay, trade number one is in the books. Ernie's always beating me. All right, next one is net. Go back to net. It was that same cycle. There's lots of liquidity here. Anything except the 53. So between 50 and 55, but not the 53. We're gonna, oh, sorry, you can't see that. Looking at extrinsic. What does this come out to? 1.29 over 580 is 22. That'll work. And how much was that? Open interest. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so now we're looking at net. We're looking at the October 21st again. 54 puts. 55 works fine as well, but you're going to pay an extra dollar when well, you don't have to. Net, October 21st, 54 puts. See where I can get filled. All right, that's working. Try on 570. Okay, filled in net at 570, 570. See if, I can, see if I can be ahead of Ernie on that one. Net, October 21st, 54 puts for 570. I'm going to type it in the Discord real quick. Trade number two, net, 
54 puts, expires, 10, 21, 4, it was, what was the price? 570. When trading at, it's 49.56 at this, oh, sorry, sorry, at 49.56, current price of net, okay. All right, very cool. So, uh, to recap, started at 500 stocks, whittled our way down to two, and put those two on. Long puts only, uh, no golden spreads in these guys because of liquidity. So, that is all of the trading we're going to do. Now let's move into our final thoughts. I think it was Brian last week in the Discord said how much he's enjoying having the uh, having the Discord, which I totally agree with you, Brian. I, I I wish we had done this sooner, but I'm glad that we have it now. So one of the things that I'm doing right now is I'm uh, rereading Mark's books uh, over again. And uh, gosh, this is probably the eighth time I've read them. I'm working on his first one now. This, this is an excerpt from his second one. But I also was listening to uh, some of Mark's interviews that he's done on... Um, on YouTube, and, and as you guys know, I have a relationship with Mark, um, but I, it's really cool to be able to access him at any time, right? Be able to hear his thoughts, hear his opinions, hear his feelings, and hear his uh, his experience from the best trader in the world. Just imagine for a minute, right? Uh, what year is it? 2022? Imagine uh, 1922. You're trying to chase around Jesse Livermore to find out how he trades and how difficult that would be. I mean, the internet is the greatest thing ever. My my youngest son, he's 10 now, he was asking me, what was it like when the internet first started? And I was like, it was a fad. People thought it would go away. And I think the hardest thing for people to overcome was uh, buying things on the internet. This random website called Amazon, which housed, you know, only books. But it was scary because it's like, I don't know, I'm putting my credit card number in and it's just going to disappear and are they scamming me and I don't know what it's, uh, what's going to happen. But it's because of an, an amazing, amazing development like we have now that uh, we can access these people at the tip of our fingertips. It's just absolutely incredible. Such a blessing. So here's one of Mark's sayings and this actually is in the, uh, the first book and I guess it's in the second book too. Always trade directionally. I know it's there because I just read it the other day. When I saw this quote, I was like, oh yeah, for sure. And this was in one of the YouTube videos that I watched um, where he's being interviewed talking about stuff. If a stock you like has come down in price, wait until it starts to turn around again before you commit your hard-earned capital. So imagine he's, he's talking about buying stocks, okay? Not short, not short selling, not buying puts. If a stock you like went from 50 to 70, right? If a stock you like has come down in price, so now it was 50, went up to 70, and now it's down to 57. Wait until it starts to turn back around before you commit your hard-earned capital. So imagine the stock's moving up, it's pulled, you know, it's had a pullback, it's set up for you, whatever the case is. Wait until it comes back up again. Wait until it's stopped going down and starts going back up before you buy it. Now, a lot of people learned the really hard lesson as to why you do that in 2022. I saw this great compilation of uh, Dave Portnoy from Barstool Sports and how he was doing his day trading thing. And I watched a few of them, honestly. I watched a few of them to see what he was up to. But it was such a great, great thing because he, he, he was just basically yelling at his audience like, just man up, just grab it by the ball. Stocks always go up. What are you waiting for? You know, all this all this awful stuff. And then you see, you know, a couple seconds later, he's like, oh, I just lost $50,000. And then, like, he's, like, throwing stuff across the room because he didn't know how to control his risk. And he was buying falling stocks, you know, averaging down. And Mark says here, I never buy a falling stock. I always trade directionally. This applies to all time frames. All time frames. The daily, the weekly, the monthly, the intraday, the everything. From a long-term investing to swing trading and even day trading, allowing the market to guide you 
put you in sync with it. Don't fight the trend is what he's saying. And this increases your chances of making a profit and limiting losses when you're moving with the trend in all time frames, all one direction. Over time, you will, at a minimum, experience smaller drawdowns. And that's really the key. If you go through your P&L and just uh, take your, your drawdowns over any period of time and cut them in half, your overall net gain will be significantly higher. It's not about how big of the win each one is. It's about how small of a drawdown you can make each loss. Because the losses work against you geometrically, which means that they work against you way more faster than uh, than the gains do, which is crazy to think about. People don't think from that perspective. But you limit your losses, you're going to maximize your gains in the process. All right, somebody chat in the Discord. What well, position size? Ah, oh, Sebastian. Sebastian's asking me for for a little handout real quick. Sebastian, if you were looking at a hundred thousand on coop. That would only be three. On net, that position size would only be two. Reason being is the ATRs and these are really big. The ATR values right now are really, really big. So I hope that helps you, Sebastian. I'm glad you asked. All right, you guys have a fantastic afternoon. By the way, Sebastian asked me about that uh, in, in the consultation he and I had. So I, I went ahead and filled that in for him. Pro tip, Sebastian. Just just watch right here. I always got you, my friend. You guys have a fantastic afternoon. We'll talk soon. See you tomorrow. Hey, don't forget, before you head out, head to secretinvestingbook.com right now to get your free copy of the Secret Investing Book. This is how to finally get a positively unfair advantage in the stock market. And it has 13 of the secrets that Wall Street does not want you to know. And I want to send this to you for free today. Just help me by covering shipping. And the way you can do that is by going to secretinvestingbook.com. That's secretinvestingbook.com. And I'll ship this out for you right away. Thanks so much. I'll see you.